What I've been trying to do in my studies is get inside the mind, inside the mindset of people who do violent things, to try to see how they make sense of the world. So I was able to interview Mahmoud Abulima, one of the key people involved in the 1993 bombing of the World Trade Center. And when I talked with him, he was in prison. He had been tried and he was incarcerated. And it took me forever. It's harder to break into prison than break out of it. It took me two years to get in, uh, to get permissions and be able to see him. But they cleared out the whole cafeteria in the prison. I was surrounded by about 12 guards who were afraid that he would try to take me a captive. And we had a series of conversations. And at one point, he was trying to explain to me how he saw the world and how it was different the way that I saw the world. He said, Mr. Mark, you people just don't see it. You're like sheep, you know. The, 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 government, the government is the enemy. There's a great war going on, a battle between good and evil, Mr. Mark, and you're not allowed to see it. And I said, well, what, what, what can be done? And he said, you know, you people, you people need to be shaken awake. And he about to reach out to me to show how we needed to be shaken awake. And the guards panicked and they began to run over because they thought he was going to grab me and, and, uh, and hold me in for, for a hostage. Uh, so, but he pulled back and he said, you, you people need to be shaken awake. And, and, and shown that only, only by doing that, by doing something that out of the ordinary, will you be able to see that the battle is all around you. And it suddenly came to me what he was trying to say. I said, well, is that the reason why people bomb buildings? And he just smiled and he leaned back in his chair and he said, well, now you know. And after 9-11, of course, now that which is the successful version of what he was trying to do, he was a part of that larger uh, jihadi network. Uh, Ramzi Youssef was also a part of the attack in 1993, who was the nephew of Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, who was the chief conspirator of the 9-11 uh, attack. So it was all part of the same network. He was trying to bring down the World Trade Center, uh, Trade Center Towers as a demonstration of war, as a what I call performance violence, a performance of this war that was in their mind, this cosmic war that he imagined that we didn't see and the Muslim world didn't see. He wanted us to bite the bait, he wanted us to think in terms of war. Did and of course, that's what, that's what happened after 9-11. That's what happened in 9-11. For me, somebody who knew that's what he was trying to do, 9-12 in some ways was more problematic than 9-11. As awful of, of course, I hated to see the destruction and those people killed. But to see the president, my own president of the United States, George Bush, say, this is an act of war not just an act of terrorism. I said, my God, what are you talking about? You are buying into their message. You are helping to spread their idea that this is a cosmic war. And I think the tragedy was that not just that kind of language of the war on terror, but then the subsequent invasion and occupation of two Muslim nations by the United States, Afghanistan and then Iraq, helped to give credibility to the message of Osama bin Laden and the jihadists, that there is a war. So one of the first lessons in how to respond to acts of terrorism is to not to buy into their, to their language, to not do what, not to bring the battle to their level, to not respond in kind, because once you've done that, you've sold out. You've just, in some ways verified what they said as being credible, that this is a world at war, that we are engaged in a cosmic struggle, and we need to think in these kind of grand, almost religious terms about what are, after all, police actions and acts of, of tawdry violence that, that people like bin Laden should not be given the credibility of being a, a great statesman who can be engaged in a war with the United States. He should be regarded as the petty little burglar and, and uh, vicious uh, killer that he is and sought uh, sought out and brought to justice in a normal court where he is brought before a court of his peers and shown to be uh, the simple little uh, egomaniac that he, in fact he was. Uh, that's how you confront terrorism on the civil society's terms, on the terms of justice and not on the terms of the terrorist.